In these slides, we want to define what a partial derivative is, but before we do that, let's go back to the regular derivative uh, function of one variable and see what the regular derivative is. So the differentiation of the function of one variable with respect to x, the definition is it's the limit when delta x goes to zero, the value of the function at a nearby point x plus delta x minus the value of the function at, a, at the value x and then you divide by delta x, the separation between the two points, and then you take the limit when delta x goes to zero. So clearly when you take the difference between the value of the function here and the value of the function here, you get this height. And then when you divide by delta x, this is delta x. So you're getting basically the slope of this line. So the derivative is basically the slope of this line. Now when the two points are a bit far apart, uh, it's not that's not really how to get the derivative at you want to get the derivative at point x so what we do is get delta x become smaller and smaller and smaller and when delta x becomes zero in the in that limit then you're getting actually the slope of the function at this particular point and, uh, you can see that the slope at particular points changes as you go to different points this point or this point or this point the slope is different so the derivative of the function will be different at those at those points. And to remember how we got the differentiation rules, I think you remember that the derivative of x squared is 2x. How did we get this rule? We got it from applying this uh, definition. So if you take the function f, x squared and you get f of x plus delta x, that means you're getting x plus delta x all squared, which is this. Then you subtract and then you divide by delta x this is what you get. And if you take the limit when delta x goes to zero, you get 2x. So that's the way we got all the differentiation rules for uh, sine, cosine, whatever function you have. This is the way we got the differentiation rules based on this definition. So now what about if you have a function of two variables? For instance, this plot is a function, is a plot of this function, 2 minus 0.1x squared minus 5y squared. This function could represent, I mean, if you want something familiar to everyday life, this could represent the height of, the, of a hill, the height above the surface of the earth. So, for instance, uh, you imagine you're walking on this hill here, and uh, this is basically the height, how the height looks at different positions in the xy plane. If you're walking along the x-axis over here, the slope doesn't change much, uh, the height doesn't change much, so you, it's very smooth. But if you're walking in this direction, you can fall very easily because the, the height changes very dramatically. So there's a difference between the way the function changes in the x-direction and the way the function changes in the y-direction. They're not the same thing. They don't have to be the same thing. And so we want to define what's the partial derivative for a function of two variables. Well, you go to the point A, which has coordinates x and y, and then you go to the point B, which has coordinates x plus delta x and y, so you keep the y the same, but you just increase x a little bit. And you find the value of the function at point B, and then you subtract the value of the function at point A, and you divide by delta x and you take the limit when delta x goes to zero. So it's very similar to the definition of the function of a single variable, but in this case, when you're going from point A to point B, you're not changing y, you're keeping y constant. So when you, it's, it doesn't change during this, uh, when you're getting this partial derivative. So this partial derivative, f, partial f by partial y, it tells you how the function changes when you go in the x direction. Now, what would partial f by partial y be? It's the same idea. You start at point A, which has coordinates x and y, and then you go only in the y direction, a distance delta y. And you ar arrive at point B, which has coordinates x and y plus delta y. Then you find the value of the function at point B, this one, and you subtract the value of the function at point A, this one, and you divide by delta y, and you let the limit when delta y goes to zero. So it has exactly the same form as the derivative of a regular function, except in this case, when you get partial f by partial y, you're keeping x constant. It doesn't change. When you go from here to here, x, x stays the same. Uh, 
So this partial f by partial y will give you information of how the function changes when you move in the y direction. So let's try to calculate the partial derivatives for that function that we plotted. So when you, want, when you get partial f by partial x, how would you get that from this? We said when you get partial f by partial x, you keep y constant. So the 2 is a constant, 0.1 is a constant, and 5 is a constant, and y squared is a constant. When you're getting partial f by partial x, y squared is a constant. Now take the derivative of f with respect to x as if you would normally the regular function of x. So the derivative of 2 is 0, it's a constant. The derivative of this is 0 because it's a constant. And here you have the minus 0.1 as it is. And then now take the derivative of x squared with respect to x, you get 2x. So when you multiply this, you get this final result. You get partial f by partial y. Well, you, 2 is a constant. In this case, when you're getting the derivative with respect to y, you keep x constant. So this is a constant, and 5 is a constant. So the derivative of this with respect to y is 0. The derivative of this with respect to y is 0. And then you put the minus 5, the constant, times the derivative of y squared with respect to y. What's the derivative of y squared with respect to y? It's 2y. When you multiply, you get minus 10y. So let's put this back onto the picture that we were talking about. So when you look, when you move in the x direction, um, the, the slope is very, very small. It's 0.2x. When you move in the y direction, the slope is very large. It's 10 times y. So you can see that the slope is different in the, in the x and y direction. They don't have to be the same. So this is explanation of the der partial derivative of a function of two variables. What if you want to get the partial derivative of a function with three variables? Well, the, it's exactly the same. Now go to a three-dimensional space, start at point A, which has coordinates x, y, and z, and then go to point B by only changing x, keeping y and z constant. So you move in the x direction, a distance delta x only. Find, for instance, a good example of this would be the temperature. You know the temperature at every point in space has a certain number, has a certain value. So evaluate, for instance, the temperature at point B, the function, the value of the function, in this case the temperature, and then subtract the value of the function, in this case the temperature, at point A. And then you divide by delta x and let delta x goes to zero. So it's exactly the same idea exactly. But in this case, now you have a va the function is, has a value at every single point in three-dimensional space. So partial t by partial x will give you how the temperature changes when you go in the x direction only. Now, what's partial t by partial y? Well, it's the same thing. Start at point A, which has x, y, z coordinates, then move only in the y direction. So you're going to a point y plus delta y. You keep x and z the same. You get the value of the function at b. You get the value of the function at a and subtract them. Divide by delta y and let delta y goes to zero. This will give you how the temperature changes or the function in general changes in the y direction. Same thing for partial t by partial z. You start at point a and then move only in the z direction, a distance delta z, keeping x and y constant. Find the value of the function at b, find the value of the function at a, subtract them, divide by delta z, and take the limit when delta z goes to zero. This will tell you how the function, or in this case the temperature, changes when you go in the z direction. And of course, the temperature doesn't have to change the same way in, in each of the different uh, three directions. If you have, for instance, an air condition here, uh, and here you have a heater, then obviously the temperature on here will be higher than here. So uh, the way you, when you go in the x direction, the temperature will change a lot in the y direction. But if you go in the z direction, it might not change that much. So the, 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 the change in temperature could be different if you go in different directions. Example of this, if, let's say you have a function of three variables given to be this. What's partial f by partial x? When you get partial f by partial x, you put y and z constant. And then you take the regular derivative of this with respect to x only. So these two terms will give you zeros. And here you have 3y as it is. These are constants. And then the derivative of x squared is 2x. And you multiply and you get this. What's partial f by partial y? When you get partial f by partial y, then you keep x constant and z constant. 
So when you get the derivative with respect to y, you keep the x constant and the z constant, and you take the derivative with respect to y only. So here you put the 3x as it, x squared as it is, and then the derivative of y is 1, and then here you take the derivative of y squared, you get 2y, and then here z is a constant, so you put z as it is, then you take the derivative of y with respect to y, which is just 1. And then what's partial f by partial z? Partial f by partial z, you mean it means that you're putting x and y constant. So you have x and y constants everywhere, and then you get the derivative of every, all this with respect to z only. So this you get 0, this you get 0. You put y as it is because it's the constant. Take the derivative of z with respect to z, you get 1.